now invite Emma Gannon to continue the case for the proposition. Thank you, Mr. President, for having me, and um, it's such an honour to be here at the Oxford Union today. So, um, I guess I should start as well by saying that I'm not 100% anti-social media. After all, I would not be here. My whole career has been propelled forwards very quickly um, from uh, a young age of learning how to code on MySpace when I was 13 to now um, sort of being found on my blog and through Twitter by a literary agent and I guess cutting corners through the internet. So if this uh, proposition was um, going to be about social media and careers, it would be a very different one. But I'm very uh, <laughs> against the social media um, actually kind of for, um, making sure that uh, relationships are propelled forwards because they're really not. Um, so I wanted to start off um, by kind of looking at some smaller things that might harm relationships because I think that coming out with a show-stopping statistic uh, is, is normally what you do in these things, but I will save that till later. Um, so I recently discovered a term called breadcrumbing, which is um, in the context of social media. In the New York Times, it was called the laziest, most non-committal communication possible. So in the context of my life, breadcrumbing would be someone saying, miss you, and we should hang out. And then two weeks later or a month later, you hear nothing. Um, literally the lowest form of communication on social media. There's also other terms as well. Um, one is ghosting, um, benching, which is actually kind of like ghosting, which is when you completely disappear from real life, but you actually continue to text them and tweet them and Snapchat them, but you have no um, intention of meeting up with them in real life. And I think it's making us so much more lazy. Um, so it's not just ruining our dating lives, it's also ruining our friendships and we're treating people like they are t-shirts and a sale in Topshop, just swiping and swiping um, and not really uh, committing to anyone. The other uh, problem I think with social media is the maybe button on Facebook events because that is the devil of committing. You basically <laughs> say maybe and if something else comes up you know that you'll be straight out of there and you will not be going to that event. So it's making us lazy, it's making us not commit, and it's making us cancel more than ever on our friends. I think one of the reasons for this is that the internet is actually in its infancy. Um, Twitter is 10 years old, Facebook is 12 years old. Um, we have no willpower because we don't quite know how to treat these things because they're still so new in our lives. And I guess we're kind of like children in a sweet shop. Um, but the reason we're so addicted to our phones is actually because we get a hit of dopamine every time we use them. And we all know that this is a neurochemical, which is uh, the reward molecule. So it's every time we get a like or we get a tweet or we get anything to do with an online gratification, it stimulates the brain in a way that a hug does or even having drugs or even if you have sex. So this dopamine drug can actually f make you fall into a loop and it's making us touch, get out of touch with reality really and not see our friends as much and actually break down relationships. There's been a lot of uh, research on psychology today which says that this dopamine loop can basically get you lost in a void. And I know that my personal Google hole is watching, watching Oscar speeches. I can quote any Oscar speech um, for the last like two decades, basically. Um, so this instant gratification is making us want to look up information straight away, see what an ex-colleague is doing on LinkedIn, and basically, in short, it's becoming harder and harder for us to not look at our phones. We are addicted to them, and no one really is saying how addicted we are, even though we'll happily say we're addicted to cigarettes or even um, anything else, alcohol. Um, so, in short, it makes us feel really good to get a like on social media. And this is why I really wanted to speak um, on the motion of tonight's debate, because I feel that it's ironic. It's so ironic that we treat social media as something social, because it is far from social. The interruptions that we get on our phone are, inherently, they are social, but they're also so distracting. Pamela Rutledge, who's the director of the Media Psychology Research Center, says that we are, ne we are hardwired by nature to respond to things that are socially uh, really compelling, and any invitation will make us check our phones. But yet, we see people in romantic restaurants on their phones, not talking to each other. So the fact that we are interrupting real life social interactions because of our phones is actually very ironic. Um, so there's a 2013 article and study that went viral um, uh, by the Harris Interactive Group 
And they actually came up with the, the uh, fact that 20% of people aged 18 to 34 check their phones during sex. Um, so that is quite a statistic that I just kind of wanted to throw out there because I don't really know what human interaction is, but I'm pretty sure that is kind of up there with an interaction that you probably want to concentrate on. Um, but nearly 75% of those respondents as well said that they wanted to be within five feet of their phone at all times, and it would actually get them quite anxious if they weren't. Um, so there was also a study by one of the biggest dating sites called Badoo that said 39% of Americans spend more time socializing online than anyone else. 20% also said that they would rather text someone so that they have time to think about a response. And that actually kind of worried me, that statistic, because I think that having that ability to think about what, what you want to say to someone is actually a real luxury. And in the real life, you can't think about what you want to say. You actually have to go and say it. And I just think there's quite a romance, really, to meeting in face-to-face. -face. And I think talking to someone is kind of a basic skill that we should all um, aim to have. Um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, that you're probably all familiar with, says that the constant connection that we want to have to society by our phones is actually not one that we need um, to survive. It's not the thing that we need. We need intimate relationships. And also, a University of Oxford psychologist, Robin Dunbar, said that we only have room for 150 friends. So all of those friends that you've got on Facebook, you don't need them. You need 150 at most. You would invite 50 maybe to a dinner party. But actually, he says that five best friends is really all you need. And I agree. Um, so I thought it was interesting as well that this uh, debate was actually about corrupting human interaction. And I think the word corrupt is an interesting one. When you look it up, it says it causes to, the cause to act dishonestly in return for money or personal gain. And I think although social media obviously is brilliant for movements, it's good for um, getting lots of people together, it's good for identity poli politics, it's good for all sorts of things to do with business and grouping people together. But one thing it's not good for is actually the, the lies and, and the fake news uh, and all of the things that come along with that, and people basically pulling the wool over your eyes. There was a blogger um, in 2015 called Asina O'Neill. She went viral in, in the media about kind of coming out of her Instagram shell and her instant, uh, internet fame um, because she was tired of living a fake life, and she came out because she wanted to get in touch with reality again because it was just so removed from the real world, and she was so emotionally detached from that. There was also a study recently uh, that went around. It was an Australian study by a sex expert that said that couples that are more mushy on Facebook are actually miserable. Um, and they will probably break up. So if you ever see romantic selfies, they're in trouble. Um, so I think, what, I think what I'm trying to say is that I think social media is not helping with our trust. And I think trust is one of the biggest human qualities that um, definitely should be uh, should be, <laughs> sorry. Um, we should want to trust in one another because that's what makes humans um, a good relationship. Um, so the rise of fake news, the demise of experts, um, how people are gurus now uh, online is actually making us trust people less. The fact that post-truth was a word, uh, was word of the year is quite scary. And in, the, in a world of Donald Trump, um, I, I think we need to have some trust, especially when he's let loose on Twitter. Um, so I think that relationships need to be maintained in a sacred way. I think that they're not something that can just be returned, have likes um, in return. I think they should be something that is private and actually have a lot of work put into them. So I think that's it. The two main reasons that I think social media is corrupting human interaction is because of our addiction and because of our breakdown in trust. Thank you.